Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and if it's the first time you're visiting my channel, like, subscribe, and share. Now, today I decided um, I'd talk about this new tweet that Trump has sent out, talking about unless something miraculous happens, the raids, ice raids are going to go ahead after the 4th of July, but before his Florida campaign. I don't understand why he's being so specific. Why would you warn people who are going to be subject to ice raids when it's going to be? Unless you're trying to provoke them into self-deporting. Because panic has already hit from the last time Trump sent out the tweet about millions were going to be deported. So now he sends out another tweet telling them when it's going to be, within what margin, before the Florida campaign, but after the 4th of July or the 5th of July. It doesn't make sense. He's even saying the towns. The towns are Miami, Los Angeles, New York City, Newark, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Chicago, Houston, San Francisco, Atlanta, Denver, and New Orleans. Why would you be so specific? These kind of operations are supposed to be secret. And when he delayed it last time, when he had to delay it for 10, 10 days, apparently it was to get something passed through the Democrats, which I think they've done now. It's 4.8 billion um, to protect children or to keep children safe. But I thought it was because he let the cat out of the bag. But it can't be because now he's done it again. Even this time, he's been even more specific about the time frame when it's meant to take place. Now, I feel sorry for people who are in this position, especially now I've heard that they have people impersonating ICE, ICE officials getting the uniform, I don't know where they're getting it from, intimidating immigrants, extortion, you know, asking them for extortionate amounts of money. We have lawyers who are also exploiting them, saying that they can get their paperwork and ask, charging them lots of money. One paid 70000 another paid 46000 in cash. The thing is, is that if you're undocumented, and there is an order out for your deportation. Nobody can help you. It's pointless spending money at this stage. Pointless. You're going to need that money when and if you are deported. For those people who have paid out, I mean, somebody paid out 200000 I don't know what that was for. But rather than spend out that money, that is your livelihood when you move. Because if you're undocumented, whether or not your process is going through and it hasn't been finalised and you haven't got the documentation, it doesn't make a difference. You're not going to be able to pay your way out of it. And no, I, no official is going to ask you for money in that way. They will come to you with a warrant and that is your authentic that is the only thing that can authenticate and you have to make sure it's stamped and it's stamped properly find out what a stamp looks like you know acquaint yourself with the policies with what is supposed to happen when an ice official comes to your door you know for your protection you're not meant to um you're supposed to keep silent you know plead the fifth amendment don't sign anything, that's what they normally say, because you don't know what you're signing, and things like that. But, you know, you, you can't be giving, nobody is going to be asking for those amount of what of cash, and they're legal, and don't trust people who say they can help you. Don't trust them. Asking for all this what of money, and you're getting it, probably borrowing it, and giving it to people who are exploiting you when you're already vulnerable. So that's the main thing I wanted to tell you. Um, apparently there's buses um, that they've seen going around with just 
um, child seats in it, no room for adults. So they're saying they're focusing on children or the children they're going to separate from the parents. Their focus is on, um, apparently they're even telling you who they're focusing on. They're targeting um, unaccompanied youths who have aged out of federal care and protection. I don't know quite what that means. I don't know if they're people, I don't know if they're young men who were on probation and are now free, but if they're on the street and unaccompanied, they could be targeted. Central American families, they're targeting them as well. And I've got early childhood providers. I don't know if they're going there because those early childhood providers, they help immigrant children. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's all very, very, um, it's all very, very scary. Just wanted to make sure I covered everything. I think I said they're also targeting recently arrived immigrants, including families with children. And um, there's this organisation called CLASP, and they are... Um, they're helping, they're helping um, families and they've given some information that if, if they come for you, I'm just looking for it now, if, the, if, you, they, if you are subject to an, a raid, this is what you're meant to do, but where is this bloody thing? Ah, oh dear. This is typical, isn't it? Am I looking at the right phone? It might help if I was looking for the right phone, but yeah. I thought this was the right thing, but maybe not. Oh dear. No, it's not the right phone. But I just read from the phone a minute ago. So it happens when you have too many phones, isn't it? Um, how did I do that then? Is it email I did it from? Preparing for immigration raids. That's how I did it. Patience. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say this just in case you are a early childhood provider. Um, CLASP is saying that early childhood providers are trusted resources for immigrant families. Here's what you can do to fight back against this immoral attack and prepare for the possibility of a raid. Issue organisational statements or guidance. Don't wait for the raid to occur in your community. As soon as possible, advocacy organisations should issue statements in opposition to the raids. Government agencies should issue guidance around data privacy and immigrants' rights and service, and service providers should communicate their plan if enforcement actions occur in the community and connect clients and parents with resources CLASP has. Talking points on the raids for early childhood stakeholders. You must have a plan. Early childhood providers should take steps to prepare your program for the possibility of a raid in your communities. Ensure that children's emergency contacts are current. Know your rights and have a plan in place in the unlikely event that immigration enforcement actions occur at your centre or school-based location. CLASP has a guidance to creating a safe place policies for early childhood programmes, including a template policy. Contact Rebecca Ulrich. Now, this is spelled R-U-L-L-R-I-C-H for hotel at CLASP. That's C-L-A-S-P dot org for questions and technical assistance. Share resources and with families and community members. CLASP is compiling resources to help providers and families prepare for possible enforcement actions. We will continue to update this spreadsheet as we learn about additional resources that can help, help you make sure families know their rights in the event of an enforcement action at home, workplace or in the community.
have a plan in place for their children's care in case they are subject to enforcement actions and can locate a free or low cost immigration attorney nearby. See, this is not good. According to Trump, it's imminent. Like I said, I'm not quite sure why he's giving out so much information. Um, because it's, it would be a much more effective sweep if people didn't know. But I can only think that, you know, he's just trying to traumatise everyone. Teach people a lesson. Anyway, that's all for now. But I do hope you found this video useful. Bye-bye.